Emergency podcast, guys. Sixto Sanchez hits 99 miles per hour. Yes, you heard that right. And no, I'm not talking about kilometers per hour. Sixto Sanchez, 99 miles per hour. Two innings of work. The question is now, not is Sixto back? He is back. But how good can he be? And can he return to his former self from 2020? Tons to get into, as well as Yuri Perez's injury. This is Locked On Marlins. You are Locked On Marlins, your daily podcast on the Miami Marlins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings from England and welcome to Locked On Marlins, your daily Marlins pod. I'm your host, Peter Pratt. Hit me up, of course, at Miami Marlins underscore UK. Thanks for making Locked On Marlins your first listen of the day. This is your team every day, of course. And there is a YouTube channel, guys. Make sure you hit subscribe over on the YouTube channel, if you are listening on the audio, of course. Um, The YouTube channel is called Locked On Marlins. Easy to find, easy to subscribe, and easy to see if you have joined the show already. UK GOAT, Sean Barrett in the house, Wednesday the 13th of March. Uh, Sean, how are we doing? Doing well, but this spring training seems to go very quickly. We're fa- mm-hmm. fast approaching opening day, which is an odd situation, but yes, very much looking yeah. forward to it. Uh, heating up. Literally heating up, and that's going to be the main emphasis of this episode. We are talking about heating up. Sixto Sanchez heating up. Before we do that, this episode is sponsored by our good friends over at Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use the code locked on for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Uh, this is an emergency podcast, and it's brought to you by me, Peter Pratt, and the UK go Sean Barrett. This is an emergency podcast because Sixto Sanchez touches 99 on the gun. Two innings of work for Sixto, a multi-inning effort, a lot of uh, a lot of action within that as well. But boy, oh boy, Sean, I, I'm not sure if this is truly believable. Like, do we need to check the gun? Is this it's the gun off. Sixto Sanchez throwing two scoreless innings with 99 gasolina. Did you ever think we'd see this again? Uh, honestly, no. Um, it's weird because no. I've now sort of carved out a position where I've been super negative on Sixto for the last couple of years. We've all seen the mm. jokes about his shoulder resembling pork, pork um, <laughs> and that he probably <laughs> ate a lot of that in the in the off season. But mm. yeah, no, he is back and. When he first broke out with the Marlins, I was super high on him. I remember comparing him to sort of like Jose Fernandez as far as bursting onto the scene and the excitement levels that he brought. Obviously, he pitched in the playoff game. Yeah. This, that was so many years re- removed and so many setbacks. Yeah. The question is, would we ever see this again? And mm. really didn't think we would. No. Considering where we're at now, and listen, the, the, we'll, we'll talk about one of them as well, but like there's pitching injuries galore. The Marlins are dealing with it. The whole of baseball's dealing with it. I mean, 6 0 right now, considering there's no uh, minor league options available, like, are we at the stage now where like 6 0 seems to be pretty much a lock for, for the bullpen, at least for opening day? I think that feels like where we're at, right? Absolutely. It is a situation now where. He is at his highest level since he first broke out. And and yeah. unless the Marlins trade him, which I don't think that they will, mm. it, you can't just expect him to fall through waivers at this point. Every team's struggling for pitching. And he's flashed enough in spring just with the velocity. If he can yeah. control that velocity, that is a major league arm. So yeah. at this point, he is going to start on a roster for opening day. Is it with the Marlins or is it by a trade? I'd say more than, like, more than likely it's going to be with the Marlins because, as you said, injuries galore at the moment and it, you can never have enough pitching. doesn't matter how many p- pitchers' names you put on a T-shirt, arms no. for days, you're always <laughs> going to need another one. I'm not sure. You're going to have to start using the front and the back of these shirts um, multiple days, but... I mean, Sixto Sanchez, he ends two innings of work, just one walk and a K. His ERA still for spring sits at zero. He's not giving up any earned runs. Like, when all's said and done, like Sixto, he's showing what we needed to see. The velo's there. Frankly, no one can get a stick on him uh, at this point. He's walking around like he owns the mound. Like, you know, all we need is Timmy Trumpet and we're away. Like, for me, 
like this is this is nailed on that Sixto is going to be on the roster, like out of the pen. You know, feels like they're going to naturally like manage him closely, but the way things are going with the rotation, like the Marlins might need him in the rotation sooner rather than later, which I thought was interesting that he was asked to go two innings today. Like, you know, could that be the next progression for Sixto? Where actually they're like, hey, can we can we get a bit more out of this? Like, we're all just kind of focused on the bullpen and just being back, but. Do we think the goal actually is to be a starter for Sixto Sanchez in 2024? I mean, at this point, you, you probably would say that between April and May, he's going to have to start a game because obviously we know who's in the rotation. But at a certain point, you've got him and you've got him Soriano, you've got Hoeing. At this point, who would you trust more to start? And with what we've seen from Sixto, I, I put his list, his name on top of that list. Yeah. I mean, you've got Smelter in there too. I mean, for what that for what it's worth there. But yeah, to your point, like Sixto's, he's demonstrating the skills at this point. Like I know they've optioned Max Meyer because um, they had options available. Like Sixto has to be on this roster. And to your point as well, you you DFA and wave Sixto now, someone's going to pick him up because you can kind of stash him in a bullpen for now and just see how it goes. Um, you know, I, I think I think the Marlins are going to need to. We've seen today as well, JT Chagua looks like he's, going to see a specialist regarding a neck issue. That doesn't sound good. So, you know, Brazaban, where's Brazaban? I haven't heard anything about Brazaban apart from his name and his locker is no longer there. So, like, has Brazaban retired? I don't know. But, like, the way this bullpen's shaping up, there's a space there for Sixto. And he's pitching like he deserves a spot. This isn't like a sympathy spot. This isn't like, oh, we have to carry this dude and stash him. I'm looking at what I'm seeing. I'm thinking this dude might get some saves in 24 as well. I know I'm talking about, uh, you know, becoming a, a starter again, but Sean over under on the 0 0.05 saves for Sixto Sanchez for the Marlins in, in 24. <laughs> again, I mean, at this point with Sixto, I can't, I can't say anything as far as doubting him. Yeah, I think mm. the early part of the season, you know, the, there's going to be plenty of guys fighting for that role and there's going to be days off where one guy will need a day off and, and Sixto could be the guy that's thrust into that position. The stuff, you know, plays, that's for sure, especially what we've seen early spring across these sort of small innings um, appearances. Yeah, 0.5, I mean, you've set the bar, well, you've set it, the bar as low as I'd set it for Sixto coming into the season, so I'll have to for take sure. the over at this point. You'd have to take the over, wouldn't you? I mean, like, who knows how things play out and, yeah, to your point, like, with saves, you know, particularly the Marlins, because they just want to play 1-0 games, basically. There's going to be, you know, a need for multiple guys to have save opportunities. And so there's no reason why at this point that Sixto couldn't be one of them guys. This is truly a remarkable comeback, to be honest with you, mate. There's a lot of talk about Puck, Weathers, other guys. But for me, for Sixto Sanchez, like, this is the story of the offseason for the Marlins. Like, I, this is the most bewildering situation. One that I never anticipated to see personally. For those that listen to this show for many years that I've done this show, uh, I've been with Sean. Like, I, I expected almost six to just fizzle out and retire, basically, and just never make it back. So for him to be here doing this in spring, it's it's truly blown my mind, to be honest with you. I think it's blown a lot of Marlins' Twitter mind, which is a lot of fun uh, to see. But, you know, at this point, you, you got to look at it and think, this dude's going to make the roster and he's proven a lot of people wrong. I haven't heard Craig Mish tweeting. I know that. <laughs> um, so with that being said, on the other side of this one, well, no, actually just on six though, just to, to finish up, it isn't just, there was one pitch of 99. When I looked at his body of work today, I think there was 20, he threw 23 pitches, I think in total 13 for strikes, but a good portion of them were like the upper nineties. Like there was, you know, in his first outing, it was like maybe there was one or two where he actually threw the fastball. It was like, uh-oh, like, is there anything there? Now it's like he's working it in. We're seeing the 99 Gasolina. We're seeing the 98s, the 97s pretty regularly. And also the other encouraging thing today as well was the sharpness looked to be there from a fielding perspective. These, you know, these these fielding drills have been paying off. Like Sixto couldn't have, a he couldn't have fielded a baseball for three and a half. Like, he probably hasn't been doing any of that. And he was looking just as slick with the ball on the ground as anyone. So, you know, again, Sean, highly encouraging this for Sixto and completely surprising, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. It is a case of that's probably a second, well, it is obviously a secondary thing for him. 
um, during training. But obviously, those PFPs have been working out, and to see it actually work in a live game is, mm. is the key thing. Because as you said, yeah, the, he's not been on the mound much at all, let alone in live game reps. So to exactly. see the defense there, to, and a lot of times the, the the mark on him has been the effort. How much does he mm. really want it? Mm. Well, obviously, he's been paying attention in the training. Um, fielding as well so that's always a, a positive side clean ball i mean the end of the day gasolina there two clean innings pretty much um plenty of uh you know ground balls that he had to field he even got a double play rolling as well i think so fielded one zing did the second base and then they rolled and turned the double play um you know encouraging really encouraging like marlin's twitter is ablaze talking about sixto sanchez at this point and rightly so and I did my favorite tweet of all of this that I did see, and there's been a lot of volume that's happened. This is this podcast is being recorded like immediately after the game, effectively. My favorite one that I saw was that the Rio Muto trade is not done yet. <laughs> I love that um, because clearly for years, you know, that's been the thorn in the side here, where like it's been, oh man, the Marlins were fleeced again on another like blue chip dude in JT Rio Muto. But I did see that tweet saying that that trade is not finished yet. And with all this control with six, though, like, who knows? Who knows how this goes? So, man, it's been encouraging signs for sure. And, uh, you know, this is just another step forward for him. Two innings of work. Let's see what the next outing is. Um, and let's see if he can make this roster. And as he builds up through 24, let's see what whether six go, can actually get back to a rotational piece that, frankly, the Marlins might need. I'm going to talk about that straight off the ad because... Yuri Perez, it was Yuri Day. He only ends up getting one out, then exits the game. Another Marlins pitcher exiting the game. And this has been a constant situation for Yuri Perez. How do the Marlins handle this? What do they do? What does it mean for everyone else? There's tons of question marks. Nevertheless, this episode is brought to you by our good friends over at Prize Picks. Yes, sir. So we got the graphics on. Firstly, I do need a producer for this show. Uh, but guys, Prize Picks. Let me get the right script up as well. I'm on the wrong script. What what day is it? <laughs> Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. Uh, it's the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch those winnings. Roll in, baby. Football season may be over, but the action on the floor is heating up. Whether it's tournament season or the fight for playoff home court, there's no shortage of high stakes basketball moments this time of the year. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. And you can win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks. With as little as four correct picks, you can turn 10 bucks into 1,000 with NBA, NHL, college basketball entries today on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app so all you have to do is download the app today and use the code this is all lowercase by the way locked on mlb the code wasn't this is all lowercase locked on mlb the code is locked on mlb and that is all in lowercase <laughs> just in case you were wondering for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks uh price picks pick more pick less it's that easy Oh, that didn't feel easy for some reason. I had the wrong screen, the wrong script, the wrong everything going on. But we got there in the end. You're back here with me, Peter Pratt. And UK go Sean Barrett, Sixto Sanchez has just dazzled. Gasolina from Sixto. And he is right in the mix for the opening day bullpen. We'll see what kind of leverage innings he gets. We'll see what his role can become. Fundamentally, can Sixto stay healthy in 24? And can he contribute? The Marlins, I think, are going to need him. Sean, Yuri Perez exits the game again linked to this fingernail issue, this finger issue that's been plaguing him all through spring. Kind of reminds me of, <laughs> it's the worst comp ever, but it reminds me of Eliezer Hernandez a few years ago where there was just like this blister issue that just like was just reoccurring. It was like, how are we going to resolve this, guys? The way to resolve it was to kind of remove Eliezer from the organization. We're not expecting that with Yuri Perez, but... Sean, how discouraging is this, considering the backdrop of all the other injuries happening, that, that Yuri seemingly can't get himself right with this finger? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lesser issue, obviously. It's something that should be resolvable. Um, it's a shame that they've not managed to do it. 
they spoke mm. on the broadcast um, when he was on the mound about him having an acrylic nail um, put onto that finger, which I, I, now I've got envisioned of Mel doing Yuri's nails in the in the clubhouse. Um, maybe they need to that's get probably special. true. Maybe they need to get a specialist. Maybe they need to get somebody who actually know, they need a beauty um, <laughs> person to come in and actually do Yuri's nails, put some nice designs on it or something. I mean, <laughs> you I want some French tips on Yuri Perez's nails? I kid, of course, but it is a situation where you hope that they can resolve it. It was an issue for him early in last spring, and they, they found a way to resolve it. Um, yeah. And and he's got two, maybe three more appearances that he can make in the spring. Um, so it is a case of they'll, they'll, they'll figure it out. And I would be very worried if this affects his opening day availability or his availability into his first time through the rotation. It's something that should be simply fixed. Um, but yeah, a concern that it is as yet not resolved. Yeah, this this whole story just you know, like this acrylic nail situation. And to your point, is it Mel Stoudemire in in the clubhouse, like putting nails on him? And I don't know what's going on here. Um, even so, like it's just discouraging, and it feels like, I mean, how do you resolve it? Do you just stop throwing for a while? Like, is that which is clearly not what they want to happen at this point, but. You know, Yuri Perez, this is his start. This is his day. And he's rocked out and he's thrown... What's he thrown here? Uh, 14 pitches for Yuri Perez. Two walks uh, and a K. So it's not enough. It's not what he'd expect to be throwing. The interesting thing is, like, what happens in the next few days. But you have to, you do have to wonder and kind of scratch your head at this point and think, you know, could the Marlins have have done something different in terms of managing this earlier on, like, you know, in the earlier part of spring, maybe kind of slow him down a touch and then build up more to opening day. Now we're like literally two weeks away from opening day, just over. And we've got Yuri Perez exiting the game after 14 pitches. He's got an acrylic nail on and something's still not right with it. I'm thinking this has snowballed through spring and maybe should have been nipped in the bud. But here we are. And... I'm very intrigued to see how Yuri goes in his next start because, yeah, he's probably got, what, two more turns max, I would say, um, depending on how the Marlins play it. So maybe two more turns. What are we going to get? And if Yuri Perez is down, Sean, I mean, you know, Brax is definitely missing some time. Eddie Cabrera, I think, is on the bubble, but I think most likely misses the at least the first week. So that's two of them. Max Meyer's just been optioned. I think if Yuri Perez... You know, if he needs to miss a start to get it rolling, like, I think Max Meyer is going to crack this rotation as well, which, again, is kind of surprising that he was optioned yesterday. Where, where's the option to at this point, Sean? Do you know this? I, I, I tried to do the pod yesterday and, and cover that. And I was like, I have no idea where Max Meyer goes. He's been optioned, but, like, what are the guys doing at AAA? Are they playing? Are they not? But he must be throwing somewhere, I guess. So um, if you know, please enlighten me. <laughs> I, don't, I know that extended spring training goes on for for several weeks at a different campus, presumably all the same campus, while the rest of the guys yeah. go to the major league. So yeah, he'll still be thrown, obviously. Uh, yeah, but we're getting behind the work scenes, but um, whether or not he's actually seen live at bats is 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 probably a no, um, in in my opinion. But yeah, you're right. This is a situation where he'd be next man up, and to be honest, that wouldn't be the end of the world. But obviously. Going into spring, you you know that it's a war of attrition. And mm. if you're so battled down already that you're going for secondary guys or, or even guys that you weren't planning on, on counting for at the beginning of the season, it's yeah. a, it is a bit of a concern. Yeah, definitely. And it, uh, for me as well, like, I mean, Lozado appears to be okay health wise. He had this little velo dip a few starts ago, which got people a touch spooked. But it's fair to say, like the uh, the outcomes of Lazardo's outings uh, have not been overly impressive the last couple of times through. Which, you know, it isn't about the outcomes; it's about the body of work, really. And you know, we don't know what they're working on at the time, but you know, you do kind of like you got. A, I've got a little nagging doubt in my mind. Like you saw that velo dip. Next thing is the outcomes don't look good. You're thinking, like, is something there with Lazardo as well? And all of a sudden, this rotation just fully decimated. But even so, I look around and I think. You know, the way Puck's emerged and the, the way Weathers seemingly has emerged, Trevor Rogers looks like he's back. Again, that's another super surprise. You know, L Lazardo's there too. Like, 
the Marlins are still going to have a decent rotation here that's going to give them a chance to compete, uh, I think. One final one, just to talk about anyway, let me do the final ad, and I just want to let you know leave on this, really. I think what's kind of trending under the radar a touch here, Sean, because we're all focused on the pitching, the injuries, the bullpen, the 6 though, everything, all these stories, but, you know, the offense has definitely looked a bit slow as well, and I think it's time for the offense to get in gear. But uh, before we do that, let's... Um, do our final ad of the day, and it's our good friends over at Game Time. Uh, if you're producing this show, please hit the graphics for Game Time. Thank you, sir. <laughs> um, guys, tickets. Let's talk tickets. Let's talk opening day. Have you had your emails from 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 the Marlins? Uh, it's probably sold out by now, but you shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. And with killer. Last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and the best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Uh, I personally sat there trying to buy Roland Garros tickets today. Uh, that wasn't via Game Time. I should have done, and I was unsuccessful with those tickets. Nevertheless, Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. You can see the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All-in prices show your total upfront. So you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. And you can buy tickets in seconds with just two taps. Tap, tap, boom, baby. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create that account. Redeem the code, and the code is Locked On for 20 bucks off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. All right, final segment here, then we're out of here. Breezy pod. I've got a tennis match, so I need to get out of here relatively quickly. Uh, Sean, talk to me about this offense. We haven't spoken for probably a week and a half, I would say, on this show. Uh, I'm a touch concerned about some of the offensive numbers that I'm seeing. Try, if you can, to summarize your sense about where the offense is at at this point and your level of panic or not at this stage. I, I tend to not to panic too much about offensive numbers in spring. We know that the, the hits are behind the pitchers to begin with. Um, I remember early in the spring, people worried about Arias because he was 0 for however many it was. Yeah, I think it was 0 for 7 or something to start. All of a sudden, he's hitting over 300, another two hits today. Um, Bell absolutely ripped one today that just went foul. Um, but the sound of the, off the bat really did, uh, did raise my eyebrows a little bit. I thought that was long gone. But, yeah, on the whole, there's been some slow starts. Obviously, seeing Tim Anderson hit one the other day out of the park was a, a big positive. Um, Jesus Sanchez has had a fairly decent offensive spring, actually. Um, but, yeah, there aren't too many standouts. I will just finish by saying that Garrett Cooper has a 983 OPS in of spring this does. year. But, um, yeah, less is said about that, I guess. <laughs> How about Coop with a, I think it was an oppo with a boppo three-run blast, if I, I remember correctly. Um, yeah, you know, good to see Coop doing his thing. And uh, looks like he'd probably make that roster, I guess. Um, you know, I mean, one final one on the offense. Like, it, you know, the, the, the feeling is that the roster is kind of ready to go. Like, there's no real battles remaining now. But things would change if, if indeed something changes with maybe JD Martinez. Uh, what was your take on that? The Marlins seemingly were talking to Martinez. No formal offer was made, according to Craig Mish, uh, back on Friday. We're a few days on. You know, we haven't seen anything regarding JD Martinez. Um, this is a kind of a weird, like, it's the 13th of March. And JD Martinez, one of the best offensive dudes in the league last year, hasn't even signed. Like, like, what's he going, what's he hoping for? I guess he's kind of hoping for you know, someone big to go down hurt, I guess. I mean, is that the card that J.D. Martinez is playing? Like, basically, the Snell situation where, you know, you wait for Garrett Cole's arm to blow up, and you're like, hey, well, hey, well all of a sudden, we've got the leverage back. Like, I don't really know what Martinez's end game is here because, you know, if, if he didn't find anything a few weeks back, like, what's he waiting for? Just, you know, sign somewhere. What's he doing? I think he's waiting for someone to be desperate, I guess. I mean, there you just know. wait for That's Cole. The Yankees also got Judge having MRIs on his <laughs> abdomen, yes. so you, yes. you never know. Not only him, but JD um, Davis was mm. EFA at one at one year, seven million basically. No yeah. one picked him up, and he's now walking the streets. It's 
it's bizarre that you and he's really perfect for the Marlins. He was power hitting third baseman, so you can put you can put you know Berger at first base. You've got a genuine DH in Bell. I mean, at that money, it's it's it is criminal that these guys are still walking the streets. They should be on major league rosters. And, sure. and um, it's yeah, it's a bit of an indictment of the finances of baseball at the moment. Yeah, something's off, isn't it? This off season has been really funky with like loads of like seemingly, you know, impact dudes. Like they're not they're not bums, they're not scrubs. These are dudes that you know are, are positive war dudes um, on any roster, and they're struggling to get <laughs> big league contracts. Like they're getting they're having to take minor league in, invites and see how it goes. It's kind of crazy, and then. You know, you've got the Cy Young, the current Cy Young, uh, you know, winner, still not signed. And it's 13th of March. I mean, what's he going to miss the first month? Like, I don't know, whatever it might be. So, man, oh, man, it's been a weird one. Anyway, um, I'm with you. Like, the spring stats, they don't really matter. And it, it's normally is a slow start. And, 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 you know, it feels like, you know, the health has been there on the offensive side. Like, we know we've a lot of pitching issues, but from a Marlins perspective, like, you got to look at Jazz. Like, you look straight away and you go, what's happening with Jazz health-wise? He looks to have no tweaks. He's on, like, MLB Network saying, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. I've put on a bit of bulk. I've put on a bit of size, Jazz is saying. So, and as well, like, we haven't got time for this now, but Jazz out there saying, listen, healthy full year of Jazz, 30-30 is a bad year. Like, that's where Jazz's head's at at this point. Um, he thinks 30-30 is like a low a low mark for him. So, Sean has been a fun one, a breezy one. I got a tennis match, and it's a guy I've never beaten before. He's beaten me multiple times straight sets. So it's going to be a tough ask for me, uh, no doubt. But Sixto Sanchez has got Marlins Twitter ablaze, and he has got the speed gun ablaze with 99 Gasolina, and it's been like high 90s from Sixto. I think he's making this roster. I think he's in the pen. And to be honest with you, I think he's going to get some leverage opportunities relatively quickly out of the pen. Yuri Perez and the Marlins need to sort out this finger issue because we're two weeks away. This is reoccurring. What we need is for Yuri not to be missing any time. No time. We don't, we don't need any Yuri issues. The Marlins need to find a way to solve this rapidly. Offense is coming around. Arise is back. Tim Anderson's back. Jazz is cruising. If they add J.D. Martinez, this offense is really, really dangerous. Thanks for joining me and the UK GOAT uh, on Locked on Marlins and making it your first listen, guys. Back tomorrow uh, as we probably carry on this conversation as it feels like Sixto needs another episode. I look forward to seeing you then.